welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing a couple, or actually a few, um, apartment DIYs. I've been taking a lot of time during these crazy few months and even before self-isolation and all that um, to be sprucing up things in my apartment. We've officially been here for over a year, which is really exciting. I have a bunch of organization content coming up for you guys, which I think you guys will really like because I know everyone is really into obviously decluttering and spring cleaning and all that. But today's video is just going to be a few easy changes that I made in my apartment and a lot of DIY fun. So with that being said, let's just get started. <laughs> Let's like backtrack a little bit into the first craft and this was actually something I did and started pre-quarantine, pre-going to Florida, rewinding it back a little bit. This is like in February, I believe, and wow guys, um, I decided to do a small Ikea hack. You guys know I love my Ikea hacks. I literally made my entire sofa in my living room out of two Ikea beds. So this was right up my alley. <laughs> What we're looking for today is the Ivar, Ivar, I'm gonna link it up here, but a lot of people, but a lot of people have done certain hacks with this specific cabinet, so we're gonna go and try to do it. It was going to be pretty much to store some extra stuff in our living room, like our board games, some workout equipment, some stuff that I just wanted to be easily accessible. And then we also trolleyed our way onto Home Depot. Do you do white plus beige? Or do you want to do like, do you want to be daring and do something like this? No. Do you want a fern? Did you get one? Yay. Is this for $40? Yeah, this is actually pretty good. Should we just grab one? Thinking about it. Wow, we should just keep him in here. He looks great. This is the type of leg we got. They are the Alexandria molding Ash Parsons leg. And the reason why I got these ones in particular is because they're completely like untreated wood. So that way, if we wanted to stain them or something or paint them, we definitely could. We're going to build this cabinet. Ivar. So we got our painting station ready to go. I sat the cabinet on top of a small piece of MDF that we had from a previous project. So that way um, I'm able to really get into all like the nooks and crannies. I didn't have a little foam roller, so I had to pick one up. And then the color I decided to do, sorry guys, my dishwasher is running, but um, the color I decided to do was white cliff beige. I wanted something that was slightly different than the color on the wall, just because I think if I painted this super white, I'm afraid that it's gonna look like really cheap. The paint doesn't smell at all. It's very weird. I did a satin enamel by Bear um, that's meant for bathrooms and stuff because this is in a high traffic area. But I'm shocked, guys. This does not smell. It's very weird. Okay, we're done coat one, and I'm super happy with it. I still need to go in, like, on the inside at some point and, like, kind of touch up certain things. But this is looking really spectacular. able to buy multiple units and stack them so you can have like even an entire wardrobe I've seen people who've done a whole wall of Evar units which I wish I had the space to because I definitely need the storage but I like it for now I'm thinking of getting one more just so it could be like a taller cabinet because it would be nice to kind of have some extra space for some books and some extra stuff like Toledo's toys and stuff like that so that is really awesome so the next project that I have here guys is something really simple and I just wanted to talk about the trend of black accents. So I have 
black curtain rods in my living room and I think it gives a really really nice juxtaposition between all of like the off-white stuff in my living room and then just having like these industrial looking bars to carry my like off-white curtains. I picked up this mirror a while ago because I wanted another option for outfit photos and stuff like that and plus it, mirrors always make a room look a lot larger and we had this empty wall here it was perfect. So I bought this originally in silver. You guys can see what it looked like before. In the home improvement whole thing, I thought it would be good to paint this mirror. Um, I don't want to go out and buy anything, so this is all very experimental, but I purchased this mirror from HomeSense a while ago and something just didn't sit right with me. I love the size. I like the mirror in general. It's a really good quality mirror. But I realized we have nothing silver in our apartment, so it doesn't really make sense for it to have a silver frame. In hindsight, I probably should have went with like a black mirror or like a brass one, but this one was really affordable, which is why I decided to go for it in really good quality. So I'm actually going to paint the frame black myself. This shouldn't take more than like an hour, I hope. And all I did here was prime it in white, just with some leftover paint. Um, making sure that I taped off the mirror part. So now that we have everything taped up and all that, I am going to open, oh man, I broke it, a can of white paint. This is actually, I believe, enamel paint. We bought this essentially for metal and wood and trim, so this should be okay on the metal. And then I'm just gonna go in with some plain old craft acrylic paint. Guys, this craft cost me like two bucks, probably. Um, I really wanted like a good matte black on this. Um, the mirror was pretty inexpensive. I don't have the ventilation for spray paint in my unit because I don't have a balcony or anything like that or like a front lawn. So this was a much better option. And just a little bit of black paint, guys, goes a super long way. I think that this just made the mirror look a lot more chic and just a lot more intentional in our space. Okay, so the next thing that I decide to do, guys, and I already hinted at this on my um, Instagram, if you guys have seen it already, but it is my DIY herb garden. And I think that this is such an easy, nice little DIY for summertime, especially if you live in an apartment and don't really, especially if you have a balcony, this would be even better. I love having fresh herbs on our pizza and on our pastas and salmon and all that fun stuff in the summer and this is the perfect time to start an herb garden indoors. While we were getting takeout a few days ago, there were so many cute little convenience stores and um, little like smaller grocery stores that started putting herbs out for sale, which was so exciting to me because our herb garden sadly didn't make it through the year. We decided to order five um, different pots. We may not need them all. However, um, we have been propagating some other plants too and it could probably work for those. This makes me look like the plant queen. I am not. This is like literally three days of growth. It's actually crazy how much they've grown. Like that one's already reaching the top of the glass. So these babies with all of their roots are pretty much ready to plant in a few days so while we're at it i might as well give you guys an update on how all our plants are doing i have a full-on plant tour on my instagram um, i have a full igtv one and people are always asking me how we keep our plants so healthy and the answer is i don't know um i think the thing is really just getting a lot of good sunlight we face north west we face northwest, which um, is like pretty optimal for plant growth, I would say, but it's not like, and our windows are just so big. Like I never have to pull out artificial light for my videos because we just have so much nice light in our living room, especially. This one is our pothos plant. Um, I just watered him, so if he looks a little wilty, that's why he really needed water. Our place is super dry at the moment. Um, but he sits here right near the mirror. He's really cute. The plant stand is from HomeSense and then the little pot um, I actually got at a local flower shop. The next little guy we have here is our snake plant. What do we call him? Kevin Durant? This one's named Kevin Durant. <laughs> and then over here we have our Monstera. Honestly, this one is just so easy to have grow as well, but I don't think our plant has ever grown bigger than this. And then this is one of our more finicky plants. This one's Sideshow Bob, um, but as you can see, he dries out really easily. This one needs to be 
um, definitely trimmed and taken care of, but he's, oh my god, I'm literally just dropping things. A lot of people are probably gonna wonder what happened to our first fiddle leaf fig. He's right here, just kidding. Do you wanna tell the story of our first fiddle leaf fig? We went to Florida, pre-quarantine. And we were only supposed to be in Miami for about a week, and we only water him once a week. So we thought it would be okay, and then we extended our trip, and then never told my mom we forgot to get to water. water. This guy was 40 bucks at Home Depot, and he's been doing okay this entire quarantine. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any suggestions on how to grow them, let me know. Okay, so moving on to our last little guy. This is our Chinese money plant, also called a pilea or pilea or something. And he stays in the corner in that window, but he's doing so well, guys. We water him pretty much as much as the fern. I know these guys need a lot of water. And also I was told that they're actually um, not that easy to take care of. However, I found this guy pretty easy. And I'm gonna show you guys the rest of the DIY right here. Okay, so we're finally here, right? Oh, we can get leaf. Oh, it's just lettuce. It's lettuce. Do we want parsley, really? So update, we have our herbs. We picked them up and they're super cute. We got a herb. What is this herb? What is, okay, we got rosemary, we got mint, we got thyme, we got English lavender, and we got basil. This is Genovese basil. So fun story about our pots. Um, I actually did a curbside pickup order for Home Depot, which isn't ready yet, even though I did it the day before. Um, but after looking on Indigo, I saw like the most perfect herb garden holder. Um, that would be perfect for our windowsill. So, we were thinking about canceling the Home Depot order, but I realized like I do want to propagate a lot of plants because our plants are in pretty good shape right now. So, I'm going to actually keep a lot of those terracotta plants. Plants. I'm going to keep a lot of those terracotta plants because I think that they're going to come in handy. I got some really, really cute little plant pots from indigo i'm so excited for those to come in but they probably aren't going to come in for a week so we're going to check in on the herb garden when i'm actually able to plant them yeah 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 <laughs> okay so it's a few days later and i finally got my shipment from indigo which i'm really excited so i got i think i showed you I, I mentioned it before but i actually painted those pots that i ordered from home depot but those are going to fit some plants that i'm currently propagating so those are going to be used for another project but these ones are going to be specifically for the herbs these are so cute oh my gosh okay so the first ones i got i got two of these Toledo. <laughs> so this is sophie bergen or bergen for a certain brand i wish i knew what this was it's Sophie Conrad for Bergen and Ball. And it's basically this little British herb pot holder. Okay, the only thing is I thought that these would have drainage and they don't. What's the point of putting them in this tray if there's no drainage? We don't have eye protection, so it's so empty, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna really, or shower. I didn't want anything to go wrong if I could prevent it. So we ended up drilling holes in the bottom of all of these pots, which makes them non-refundable, but you know what, we weren't gonna return them anyway. But I'm glad that we did that. So now I have peace of mind in terms of drainage. So we're just going to pot the mint now, which it's a huge mess in here, mainly because I potted it and then I changed my mind and then, yes. So far, we got these beautiful babies over here, and then we got this guy over here, and then the rosemary and thyme here, and then the English lavender over here. I know a lot of people suggest to put the labels back in, like I could, but like I'm pretty, I, like I, we know what they are. Also, I did it in a cardboard box, which made cleanup super easy, because this is pretty much the only mess on the floor that I made, so. That's another key tip if you live in a little apartment like we do. So it unexpectedly got very hot in the last couple days, so we had to install our AC unit here. So when I showed these plants, um, this wasn't here, but this is where we put our AC. This is normally where we would put the plants, but 
Um, we're actually putting them on a windowsill that really just shows kind of like a location of where we live. So I'm just gonna show them to you guys on the kitchen counter. Ta-da! These are our herbs. They're really, really cute. It's turned out really, really well. Um, I'm happy that there are like almost three price like three price options here for you guys you can obviously use a jar from like an old pasta sauce or anything like that um which would be the first most affordable option because it's essentially free um but this is the home depot option where i was able to paint them myself and this was pretty much like a five dollar little setup this would i would say would be the two dollar size setup so these are little pots from indigo they're really really small and probably expensive for what they were honestly they were like twelve dollars they have little drainage holes at the bottom which are really nice and then i would say this is the three dollar sign option which is the sophie conrad for bergen and ball collaboration i also got this off of indigo but these three pots were this whole set was about $45 Canadian. That equals about to $15 a pot. And then like obviously the little tray. The only thing about this whole setup is that these don't have drainage holes, which really bothered me because I was like, what's the point of this thing if there's no drainage holes? I mean, you plant experts could probably answer that for me. And I put pebbles at all the bottoms as well to help them. But if we didn't have a drill with um, that type of drill bit, I don't know how we would have done that, maybe with a nail or something like that. That is the complete look. And they're gonna look really nice in our windowsill once that's all cleaned up. But for now, they are actually sitting um, on that windowsill over there. They all go really perfectly. So I hope that gives you guys some inspo. You guys know I've done a ton of tie-dye on my channel and my TikTok and everything. I've done bleach dye, I've done regular tie-dye, and now I've experimented with natural dye. I've been looking at a lot of like DIYs on avocado um, natural dye. Depending on how long you dye with an avocado pit for, you can make this really deep pink or it could be a very, very subtle pink. So all you have to do, guys, I'm gonna leave a more in-depth tutorial, is you save three to four avocado pits, make sure they're fresh. If you can't keep them fresh, freeze them first. Then you are going to boil them in a pot of water for about half an hour to an hour until your water is going to be getting like deep pink. And then you just let the stuff sit in there for like however long you want to. The difference between natural dye, what I've noticed, and tie dye is that tie dye, you don't really know the color till you rinse it all out. So you almost want it to be darker than what it looks like when it's wet in that bundle. I'm sure it goes with a bunch of others, like avocado dye and turmeric and all that. You will notice that pretty much what you see is what you get. Um, but I'm really happy with how they turned out on these like 100% cotton pillowcases. You guys can see them on the back of my bed right now. It just gives my room such a soft look. If you're someone who cares about synthetic versus natural dye on pillows, this kind of can give you that ease as well, knowing that everything was dyed with natural dyes and that you did it yourself. I think that's also really, really awesome. But I'm so happy with how they turned out. I think they're super cute and just give my room like an easy, chill, relaxed vibe. Okay guys, that is the end of the video. I'm gonna have more in depth in instructions in the description box below along with a lot of my Pinterest inspo and stuff. I'm on Pinterest like uh, I can't even explain. I'm on Pinterest all the time so you guys should definitely check out there if you guys want to see what's in my wacky brain <laughs> and with that being said guys I'm gonna go but stay safe and stay healthy and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye everyone!